Dr. Tagami, your thoughts on the uh, proceedings today and the addition of a community meeting or a community review meeting, I understand the terminology. Well, with the complexity of a project like the Oakland Army Base and the impact it has not only on the region, but also specifically on West Oakland, uh, there are already a series of outreach efforts ongoing through not only the horizontal or infrastructure phase of the project, but also the vertical development phase and then ongoing operations. And so I think good community relations are important. Specific to the CEQA document, um, the California Environmental Quality Act, they are a, a series of mitigations and standard conditions of approval that were embedded in the uh, lease disposition development agreement and with the adoption of the CEQA. Um, there are roughly 660 conditions. Um, it's quite uh, voluminous. Um, it's bigger than that first book you gave me. Much bigger. Than the, first book <laughs> you gave me. the most misunderstood fact is that these activities have to be reduced to a cost, and that cost has to be embedded or absorbed into various aspects of the project. So you can say pre-development activity, the infrastructure activity, the vertical development activity, and then ongoing operations. Uh, so in the world we live in, there's a great deal of complexity. Uh, the uh, laws that are adopted, uh, at the mic I referenced that in my short lifetime there have been well over uh, 60,000 laws that have been adopted uh, in the state of California. I think the average governor sees about 1,200 new laws. Uh, many of these laws in today's world are specifically addressed at, uh, addressing environmental issues and environmental impacts. Uh, the global warming is very serious. Uh, we have less than five years to significantly reduce our emissions. Otherwise, we are doing, we're at the point of no return and what harm can be done to the planet. Mm -hmm. Affecting biodiversity coupled with increased population and other countries that are not working as vigorously to address environmental issues. Uh, the, the planet is having a real uh, challenge before it. So, do me a favor, uh, real quick. Yeah. Just for those who are so inside baseball, like the two of us, sure. explain to them what happened today. Well, uh, as a part of the LDDA, it was contemplated that a subsequent step would be to come to the Planning Commission and then subsequently to the Council to have a uh, zoning amendment done to make sure that the deal that was negotiated, the master plan and CEQA, were all aligned with the city's zoning. And so that was more administerial and that the Council wouldn't speak to. And but the LDDA is least disposition development agreement. The LDDA was already in existence, but as a part of the LDDA, there was also a development agreement element that was aside and separate from the LDDA, which was specific to how we were going to adopt, a, administer, and report these uh, standard conditions of approval and the uh, MMRPs, Mitigation Management Plan. So uh, really what we were doing here is codifying some dialogue we've already been having with the community. Clearly the administration will coordinate quarterly meetings to make sure members of the community can be informed. We will provide them notice 45 days uh, that we'll be releasing reports and or uh, studies of how we will address these issues and we'll give the community 17 days to opine, uh, looking to adopt the comments that are appropriate in conjunction with the city and making that part of the practice. Website. Is there a website? OaklandGlobal.com. Thanks, Phil. Okay. Thank you. Oakland, there's a legendary Murray Gordon. How are you? Uh, how you doing? Excellent. Tell my viewers about your appointment. Oh, man. It wasn't an appointment, it was an award. Mm -hmm. I, was, I, was, um, I was nominated for um, the White House Champion of Change for Citizen Science. And this is um, a, an award that uh, being recognized by the White House of just everyday people using science and theory of science in trying to make change in their community. And one of them, how my organization, West Oakland Environmental Indicators Project, have used science. We have our own air monitors, we do research, and we have data collection as a combination of doing our campaigns. So I was recognized by, uh, by the White House staff that deals with science and technology as this citizen who, who trying to make change in the neighborhood by using that type of uh, technical assistance. Congratulations. Yeah. Now, the Army base, how is it going and, and what are your thoughts about tonight's uh, proceedings and okay. approval? Last year when the city signed, signed the LDDA, the, LDDA, mm -hmm. the lease, the it's disposition the development agreement, development agreement mm -hmm. the way it was written that 
nothing, nothing that was a, a problematic came back to city council. That's number one. The community benefits agreements that was written never was only about jobs. Mm -hmm. The community benefit agreement was not about the air emission reduction planning. Mm. All right? And somewhere, somehow, somebody in the city staff thought air monitoring was a whole package in dealing with the mitigation issues. Hmm. So we, for, for so over two years, before Nancy Nadella left, mm -hmm. we tried to get her to support the effort of doing a mission reduction plan. She wouldn't do it. So we had to. Why? She felt, I really can't I say, she felt that the staff was going, going, was going, was going to uh, do the organizing to get this collaboration together off of this. Something happened and didn't happen. Mm -hmm. So what we had to do, and when I say we, West Oakland Environment Indicators Project mm -hmm. had to do, once the city received the TIGER grant, that's the Transportation in Infrastructure Grant for Investment, mm -hmm. once they got that grant, and they put the army base inside of it. We had read that we went went through the document and said that well, that the government says that you, the federal government says you, that you have to do public participation, and you got to come back, take that money. It's about reducing impacts, mm -hmm. not adding impacts right. to the community. Right. So what we did, we wrote a letter to DOT, mm -hmm. the Department of Transportation, Transportation. Mm -hmm. and they responded. And, and, and we put a whole list of names of people that we wanted to hear from about that, just on that item alone, and the city that messed the city up. Because that also was a next level, as we wrote that letter, was a Title VI complaint, a civil rights complaint, mm -hmm. because, they, because we felt that they had mismanaged the money, mm -hmm. because there was no public participation, mm -hmm. and there was not a, 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 a emission reduction plan in place. In place. Right. So we pushed them to the table and made the, the, the agencies that have oversight of this project sit at the table with us. Hmm. So this is why this item, when they did this rezoning, tonight, gave, tonight mm -hmm. gave us the opportunity to bring back these issues that was never up front in the beginning uh, as a community benefits okay. agreement. Are you satisfied now? That I'm, I'm, I'm much better than I was before because mm -hmm. we didn't have any of this. So, and also we supported the city council mm -hmm. getting, because a lot of things that was happening that was sitting to the city staff not being reviewed again by, by the city council. And this way they get, they get, they get some of their power back. Right, this project. Right, right. All right. So right. that's why. So those two things was never really clarified and cleared up in the LDDA. What's the next steps from here for you? Right, you? right now we, we haven't setting dates for the meeting. Mm -hmm. Setting who sets the agenda. Mm -hmm. Making sure that all meetings we have have the data, have have realistic data to do a mission reduction plan. The standard conditions of approval do not get at everything that's supposed to be done as not to have unavoidable significant impacts to West Oakland. Mm -hmm. All right, that's what we're working for. They, and one of the things that the city allowed the, the master developer to do is do an addendum to the 2002 EIR. Mm -hmm. So when they did that addendum, that took away the ability to have public participation and emission reduction, and they could do the standard conditions of approval. But when once they took that federal money, another thing kicked in, and nobody thought nobody. They didn't think that a group, environmental group, would catch on to it, and we caught it. Oh. Anything else? That, that's enough, ain't it? Yeah, yeah, I think so. <laughs> Thank you so much. Right, okay. And congratulations. Be thrown in jail right now. <laughs> <laughs> oh, <laughs> great. <laughs> oh, hey, how you doing? Oh. You want to you want to bring in there? Yeah, <laughs> what do you think about what happened tonight, Steve? Hold on a second, Bill. I want to talk to you too. Yeah. Well, I thought the uh, rationale about getting going right now, getting going as quickly as possible, was was good for all. And um, I agree that uh, because I'm on the WOCAG and mm -hmm. been there for a long time, there will be representations made about Bill Booty's. Uh, truck stop, OMSS, uh, it was really important. We have to move forward with that. You know, what wasn't said about 
the process is that they have been moving him back and forth and saying that they were going to go ahead with this and that. It's made it incredibly difficult for him to get the hands in without Arden City support from the onset. Yeah. It's always been about it because there's been so labor the and so forth. Sure. So that was one part of, the, of what was said tonight with respect to the truck parking at the base which has a long history that goes back to the time when actually we had a, a report done called the truck or no it's support services location study which showed that there needed to be about 125 acres 132 acres of truck parking in the base and unfortunately uh, when BCDC was doing what's called the base seaport plan they didn't recognize that study that mm -hmm. had been done, and so they said there was no problems. We had to go in and fight for those acres. We came up with this 30-acre idea that 15 would come from the city and 15 come from the port. And at the same time, <laughs> they redivided the base. Instead <laughs> of running uh, north-south, they began to run it east-west and kept changing around made it very difficult for people on WOCAG to understand mm. what their advice was supposed to be, you know, who, who cares what the community in West Oakland says if they keep changing the rules and saying, well, the port doesn't really have any uh, anything to do with what the community wants anymore because this property is now moved to another section of the, of the entire army base. It was quite confusing, about as confusing as this interview. But I think what the other good thing that happened out of this was that in saying that they want the Planning Commission to take more of an interest in the Army base and go through these community meetings that would happen on a quarterly basis, that now means that what happens on the Army base has to happen in accordance with what's going on with the West Oakland specific plan, right. which was funded by right. Tiger Funds. Right. And so the two of them together uh, now, I think, can make some more sense because we get some efficiencies out of being better for you. That's what we wanted for the longest. Let's see, we get Bill over here. Yeah. Hey, hey, Bill. Look, we're saying good things about you. Or he is. I don't. I don't know anything about him. Let's see. Let's now, get now can I get back to this throwing him in jail department? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, I say, let me get. Pretty contentious meeting. Uh, but Bill, can you explain the situation and introduce yourself to my viewers? So, uh, my name is uh, Bill Abudi. I actually started in trucking in Oakland in 88, uh, working at the port. Uh, we used to park on the street in front of American Steel. And uh, community and uh, WOCA actually uh, supported the movement of trucks off the streets of West Oakland onto the Army base when the transfer was happening. And I was one of 17 businesses that was listed as a West Oakland business. Um, and there was a deal struck between the group and uh, the city and the port to allocate 30 acres of truck parking to get the trucks and the businesses off the streets. Um, so as we went along, we got an interim parking uh, back in 92 uh, um, on the Naval Supply Center and it kept moving forward uh, until we got to the portion of the Army base. and. Uh, we moved there in 2003. We were port, um, transferred to city, so we became city. Um, and that's what we do. We, we basically work with the community and the truckers and find out what they need to get them off the streets. And uh, one of the last projects that we did was um, coffee. Truckers were going into West Oakland because they wanted coffee. None of the lunch trucks had coffee. Uh, so we encouraged our tenant to have an espresso machine and we put an espresso machine there. So now there's no excuse. So it's a feedback back and forth with community because we are the business community and a lot of the truckers that work at the port live in Oakland. Um, just their status is independent. There's 6,000 truckers, at least 1,000 live in Oakland. Um, the others live in the other uh, local impacted areas. 
And so this is a local issue and what we do is we service, that's why we're not called a truck stop, we service the local trucker. Um, you don't see rigs with, with containers hooked up and left like a truck stop would. Uh, this is assigned parking, you disconnect, it's, it's tailoring to the independent, to the company driver, to the truck to get them off the streets of West Oakland. Now, Steve was saying something that in, in defense of you, because viewers don't know, he said you're moved around a lot. And what was the situation with the rent? Was that an old issue that somebody was just being nasty about? Or was the guy just being a dick? I mean, you know. Well, I mean, you know, I can yeah. say this is my show, right? <laughs> That's what it sounded like to me, yeah. right? You know? There was, there was a... Was like, what did you say? Detective. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, um, we actually did not have a problem with the rent up until uh, the portion when... Um, the city took over the parking from the port. Um, and then what ended up happening is a government agency is actually competing against a private business. Don't know if that's legal or not, but it's questionable. Um, so we actually, and you heard what the, what the staff said, is I pay a lease payment, I pay rent on the land, and then I have to make my numbers work. What happens on the other side, uh, where a government agency owns the land, they just pay a management fee. So they're charging less money, hmm. and don't know why, um, but they're losing money uh, to be able to, to do that. And they've, they've known that it's all about numbers, right? The size. So as my numbers are shrinking, their numbers are expanding. Mm. So they're running 30 acres with the same yeah. personnel as my 15 acres. Um, so not only do we just do the parking, we've realized that parking is part of the problem. You need a place to park trucks, but you also need to provide the services if you don't want the trucks to go back. So we've done everything possible to attract the, the businesses and encourage small businesses to flourish on the OMSS to be able to be ready for this future development so we can have real local businesses operating on the army base. Um, so that's, that's what we do. So it's, it's an issue of competition, government agency against a private entity. Um, and also it doesn't help to have the Teamsters sue OMSS hmm. and the city for stormwater when they go up there and they say, oh, there's a lawsuit against stormwater. Well, I thought stormwater was the Ebermite issue. <laughs> no, stormwaters. Uh, what uh, what happened? They originally sued under River Watch, which is uh, a nonprofit out of Sebastopol. Mm -hmm. And but uh, if if you looked at the original letter, um, I don't know what it is, and I guess it's been for a while. Teamsters always have a an issue with pee bottle. They have a pee fetish. Right? So in the complaint, it talks about pee bottles all over my yard. <laughs> now, if you come and see the yard. You will notice we have plenty of uh, porta potties, and we actually don't really like porta potties. But whatever we can, we'll put a real bathroom. And so we have real bathrooms that drivers come all the way from the other side of the port to come use our restrooms. Uh, so, uh, but so some, that some of the drivers, mm -hmm. yours, Teamsters, everybody, they're queued up in this line mm -hmm. sometimes for most of the day, mm -hmm. eight hours. What are they going to do? If, yeah. they, if they lose their place in line, then they're, what they're they stuck. Do? Right. So it, it isn't something that you have inflicted on all your guys. You must use a pee bottle. I mean, that's just happening. Mm -hmm. And so for the Teamsters to come out and, and say, oh, it's all his fault. Was that guy a Teamster that spoke? Was yeah, two of them. One of them was the head of the. And then I, I forget what it does. Doug Block and Marty Freitas are okay. uh, the ones well, that speak. It sounds like it's all in the past now. I mean, you can move forward, right? And everything is resolved. We hope. <laughs> I mean, with the I city, mean, with the approval. Well, with the approval, we still have to go to the port. Okay. And uh, and then the, the other issue comes up is... But this is a big hurdle, though. Well, it's definitely a big hurdle. Um, we definitely need to make sure that we move all of our facilities to this five acres. Mm -hmm. We are paying for the infrastructure. Um, and so this is just negotiation. I mean, it, it, there's a lot of misunderstanding over what this passing of this is. The staff just doesn't roll over. 
there's negotiation back and forth. Mm -hmm. uh, we already know the terms that the port has set, so it's us and the, and the city working out how we're going to move one location to another location and, and do it in a timely manner uh, so we don't obstruct the master developer's project, which, by the way, we have been a developer before mm -hmm. that yes. master developer. We had the ENA back in 2007. Right. And right. Uh, we were asked by city council to give up our right to the ENA uh, so they can do the one vision. Mm -hmm. uh, then it's half a vision now. <laughs> and so, anyway, there's, there's a lot of... Yeah. Like you were saying in a lot of senses. Yeah. and, yeah. There's a lot of obstacles, so it's it's a challenge uh, to, to deal in this environment. It's a challenge to try and run a business and then deal with people that are supposed to be protecting workers that are attacking workers. And it's it's like uh, racism by unionism. It's there's there shouldn't be that. It's it's almost like saying <laughs> what happened outside today with Prop A. You know that's okay, but you because you're normal, you're not okay. You know, it doesn't, it doesn't make sense. We're all human beings. We're all trying to work. We're all trying to run a business. And we try and do our best um, mm -hmm. uh, to support local. And, you know, most of my guys were formerly incarcerated because I, I noticed that nobody was hiring. Yeah. yeah. It's, it's tough, but, uh, but that's what they, they plan on. Yeah. And uh, what it is propaganda. I mean, I, I don't know what more to say. I mean, you look at the, uh, all of the stuff that the council members that got. Yeah, I'm running out of little battery. Oh, okay. Yeah. Well, we'll come back some other time. <laughs> <laughs> but do you yeah. want to say something to close out well, before I, sure I you edit? Listen. Well, I think the only thing I'd say is... Uh, yeah. Well, I, I never edit. That's the thing. When, when the West Oakland Environmental Indicators has been uh, really uh, right in the middle of this, from the start. And during that time, Margaret got her Genius Award and then she right. got this thing tonight and everything. So you know that this has been a matter of acute concern for her and all the people mm -hmm. that are uh, tracking the West Oakland Environmental Indicators Project, plus the West Oakland Toxics Reduction Collaborative mm -hmm. Lab Lab. Mm -hmm. So it just goes on and on. And Thank you, Bill. Appreciate I think, uh, Thank you. you know, that's the heart of this matter. Are we going to get sound environmental stuff out of it? What Bill brings is more efficiency to the table. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So. Thank you, Bill, and thank you, uh, thank you, Steve. Okay. And thank you, Bill. No, but give me more time next time. Okay. <laughs> Eight minutes, man. <laughs>